Welcome back to the Scroll Heat YouTube channel. This is going to be like a slight little review of Liverpool so far after the Leicester game yesterday. I was going to do it yesterday, had a very busy day yesterday and just didn't get the time to actually do it. But one thing I do want to let you know of, if you are on Twitter and if you follow a, an account called Full Time Reaction, I'm doing 90 second videos uh, for those guys. Very, very nice guys, very cool little project that they've got going on where they want people from different clubs and representatives and stuff like that doing 90 second reviews um, like after the match, like full time reaction and stuff like that. So it's at full time reaction on Twitter and they're doing it on, they put them on YouTube and stuff like that as well. I'm doing them for Liverpool and do some 90 second re reviews on there and it's, it's cool to do. It's difficult sometimes for me to sum up stuff that quick in 90 seconds because I make quite long videos as it is, but... It's quite a nice thing to get onto. I did one for the Liverpool Leicester one today, um, yesterday, but I wanted to do one on my channel as well and just give some thoughts about it really because I thought overall it was a very positive performance. I thought, yes, we did have to come from behind and we I will talk about the defence as well, but some good... The, I love the link-up play up top that we have at the moment and we don't even have Sadio Mane back yet. He's not been involved, obviously, because of his injury that he's been recovering from. But Coutinho, Salah, Firmino. Now, Firmino, people might think, oh, he didn't get an assist, he didn't score or anything like that yesterday. But you've got to look at the guy's movement because what he's doing is freeing up space for the likes of Coutinho, for the likes of Salah as well. And anybody coming up through the midfield, he's done really well at doing that. So while he hasn't actually scored, he has been involved. Mohamed Salah, his movement is just... It's it's un it's unreal. He gives you something. Yes, he's got a lot of pace. He's got a lot of skills with his feet as well. But he just has different movement and the way he's obviously he's been playing on the right hand side where Mane normally plays. But he's a left footed player, so cutting in makes it a much different task to deal with. Whereas obviously Mane would probably maybe try and cut through, maybe stay out wide, put some crosses in, or he would come more centrally. Salah will keep going out wide, cut in, go out wide a little bit, and cut back in. It's different and it really did work and that's really how you could sum up the first goal that Liverpool came, like actually scored after we'd gone 1-0 one, one down. Now, Leicester's goal was really, really good. There's no taking away from it. It was really, really well done. Orchestrated by Mares and his tricky feet. When Mares is on form, when he's on it and when he's up for it, he's virtually unplayable. He is very, he's a ridiculous player when he's on it. It's when he's not is when you think, hmm, all right, maybe you're not, you know. He's one of these, he seems to have to be inspired or I don't know what it is. It just sometimes he can come across as a little bit lazy, but he was not lazy yesterday. Really wasn't lazy yesterday. He was up for it and he he just put most of our defence on their ass. And then it was, I can't remember who did the cross and it was Slomani got the header, trademark header for Slomani. Um, Milner, He's not going to get that. He was caught a little bit flat-footed. He just wasn't on it, you know. So Slimani gets in there. We were quite dominant in some ways, but Leicester always have a count this counter-attacking ability that it's just really difficult for, for us to shut down. Other teams will have nailed it. It's just difficult for us to shut down sometimes. So I was a little bit concerned, but then we got the, the flow of the game back and it seemed to be going a lot more in our favour. Mohamed Salah sets up the, sets up the move basically for us. He's he's out wide. He passes it and then he keeps running. Coutinho gets the ball, stops it dead with his foot. Does a nice, nice little dink, little uh, dink ball over the defence. Mohamed Salah keeps running, and I didn't expect that he was going to go for a header. Really, really didn't see that coming. But a good headed goal. I thought Schmeichel would have actually got that ball when I saw it on the replay. It wasn't as in the corner as I thought it was. And uh, yeah, it was just it was a good goal. I thought if it was you know I thought Schmeichel could have got that, but he didn't, and it went one one. And then Coutinho again, nice interplay again between Firmino and Salah, and Coutinho manages to just pull off his trademark goal when he hits it, and he hits it right. It's a trademark goal, cutting in from the left hand side on the edge of the box, swings it in past the goalkeeper, and it's two one before half time. And that's how the game finished. We ended up staying pretty much on top with a couple of threats here and there from Leicester. But we ended up doing it. We ended up winning that little tournament, the Premier League um, Asia Trophy. Which, you know, it's not a trophy. I'm not classing it as a trophy before anyone goes, oh my God, 
Liverpool fans have seen Premier League and Trophy, they're classing it as a trophy. Well, I'm not. It's it's nice to obviously win and go against some, what I would say would be difficult Premier League opposition for us. Crystal Palace, Leicester. Difficult opposition for us because normally Crystal Palace, they're normally you know quite a physical team. We've done not that well against Crystal Palace in some, some recent years. Um, Leicester, we've done okay against them. We beat them 4-1 in the first game last season when they were still under Ranieri. But then the second game, we got absolutely destroyed and it was 3-1 to those guys. And they were really rejuvenated. It was the game after Ranieri got sacked. So, you know, I think they were quite inspired by... Uh, they had to be inspired to uh, under Shakespeare. But talking of Liverpool just in general, there's a couple of things, a couple of people that obviously I want to talk about as well. But... We've got to nail the defence. And Jurgen Klopp's already come out and said it anyway. He said the defence needs to be worked on a hell of a lot more. It needs to become perfect. It needs to be fixed. You don't really get that kind of honesty from some of the managers when the things are going wrong. And um, he is right. When I see you know defensive little things like early on in the match, I think Matip, his decision making at one point, and it's only one point, it's ro- Matip is one of my favourite defenders that we've had in a long time. And he just made this mistake, Just he, he thought about something too much, turned, well he didn't turn, he just passed it and then looked, and it was going to go out for a corner. Carius, who, you know, has had his critics, and I've been one of them over this over the last season, and he didn't get a look in once Mignolet was back in the team and on form. It was difficult for the lad, because that ball coming back from Matip, he tried to do a sliding kick, and he kicked it straight straight at one of the attacking players for Leicester and if it wasn't just for a bad touch from Leicester it went back to Matip that could have been another goal and that could have been really bad that would have been that could have been the nail in the coffin for Carius's Liverpool career already you know and I I don't like saying that I don't like saying that at all because I think he could be a good goalkeeper at some point there's some points in that game today where uh, yesterday where he was uh, there was a ball that came over the top I think it was either Vardy or Slomani was running onto it, and he comes out nearly to the halfway line, clears it, and I'm like, "That's good, that's good." When you get it right, it's just getting you. Def- it's got to. He's got to get his decision making absolutely spot on. Um, defensively, again, it's Lovren. I think I just Lovren has these games where he's really, really good, and he looks like an absolute beast. He has other games where he doesn't, and this was kind of one of those games, to be honest with you. Um, everything else kind of standard in defence. You, you, you're shaky about it. You're worried about it. You're just hoping that it doesn't end up too bad. Midfield, I, I've got no complaints. I think everybody worked hard, was creative, and helped the attacking players as much as possible. When we look at the attacking players in the likes of Salah, Firmino, everyone else, we've got um, Origi, Coutinho, obviously. You've even got Lalana getting involved in there as well. Um, you've got so many attacking different players. We've got Mane to come back in. You've got Sturridge, who looks like a very sharp option. But I want to go back to the midfield. Marco Gruich. He's one lad that I think is very raw. He's very raw. Didn't get much of a shot last season. Obviously, then got injured as well. Did not get a shot. Obviously, he was injured. But he looks like such a raw talent. Now, he's got some edges to his games where you, you, you hear the commentators and that going, oh, that's not a nice tackle and all this sort of things like that. But... He's a tough tackler. However, he's one of our... like He just knows where the goal is. Now, he, had, he didn't score in this game, but he has scored in previous games, and he scored... I think it was against Tramia. He scored a 30-yard 30, 30 goal, and it was a really good goal. He seems to like the long the long-range shot, which I'm a fan of. We haven't had a lot, really a precision long-range shooter since probably consistently since maybe Gerrard. In the midfield, I'm talking about anyway. And that would be amazing if we can get something like that. Because it's just one of those things you can catch. You can do anything you want in the box. Do nice little skills and stuff like that between like Salah, Mane, Coutinho, Firmino. All that sort of stuff and have some nice movement there. You whack out a 30-35 yarder and you catch everybody unaware. It's one of those little hidden things that you can have. And being only 20 years old, maybe 20-21, I think... He's one of the ones that I'm looking at next year that could have a breakout season if he can get consistent and stay in and around the squad, if not the first 11. That's my thoughts on that anyway. I'm really looking forward to the rest of pre-season. So they're off to Germany. I think it's the Audi Cup now. 
and we will have some tough opposition in there. I'll do some previews a bit more consistently with that as well. And do check us out on the Full Time Reaction, uh, either YouTube or Twitter. Go check it out. It's a really good project, and it's literally I'll just give 90 seconds review. So nothing like this one, which is like being about 11 minutes or something like that. It's 90 seconds, little review, and then obviously I'll do my full reviews on my channel, as always. I'm not going to, you know, I'll always do that. And I'm looking forward to it. And then it's got to be Champions League playoffs. And I'm looking forward to that as well, I think. I think, anyway. You know, we've got a new left back, Andrew Robertson. Is he going to come in? Is he going to join that tour? I hope so, because I want to see him get some minutes in and see if he can actually make it into the first team. And then it's other transfer news. Don't know what else has happened. I haven't seen anything this morning. But we'll get on that as well. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts were of Liverpool in the Asia Trophy and Liverpool so far. What should we be concerned about? But what should we also be happy about so far? That would be excellent if you could get that in the comments. That would be so awesome if you could do that. Thank you ever so much for watching. As always, subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you later.